Episode 14, A Surprise Family. Blair was sitting next to Aaron's bed in the hospital room. She was pampering him and hoping all his pain would disappear. She was still confused about what to tell him, though. Because of the fall, he had a little bruise on his forehead. Moving her fingers over his bandage, Blair wished that this incident had never happened. A little later, Dan entered the room with all the paperwork and looked at Aaron. Giving a broad smile, he asked, So, champ, are you ready to go home? Oh, yes, absolutely, Aaron replied, giggling. He was quite fascinated by the way Dan spoke. Blair was sitting there simply observing their chemistry. He handed over the papers to Blair. Let's go then, Dan said as he picked Aaron and went towards the parking lot. Blair picked up her bag and followed the two. On their way to Blair's flat, Aaron had fallen asleep on the rear seat. They reached home, and Dan picked up Aaron before entering Blair's flat. He then laid them on the bed. As soon as he came out of the room, he found Blair staring at him. After a fraction of silence, Blair spoke. Thanks for everything you did today, Mr. Scott. I really appreciate all your help. I don't need your thanks, Blair. I need the truth. I need you to tell me every truth about this kid, Dan demanded. Blair almost ignored what Dan questioned. Soon, a shrewd smile crept upon her face, and she answered, I think I have already wasted a lot of your time. You must leave now. Her smile was a window to her sorrow. Before she could say anything further, Dan got closer to her and stopped her from saying anything further. Shh, just listen to me very carefully now. He placed his finger on her lips. I need the truth, Blair. I don't want to hear anything else, Dan instructed. The room was dimly lit and Dan looked scary. She was frightened. There was something about Dan, his vibe, that always dominated her. But Blair didn't let Dan sense her fear, even for a second. Those days are long gone, Mr. Scott, when Blair Cooper used to be scared of Dan Scott. But not anymore. I do not fear you anymore. It would be better if you leave now. Please go. Blair replied sternly. Hearing Blair's words, Dan fumed with rage. He held her arm and squeezed it. He was about to say something when he felt weird and turned around to find Aaron awake. Aaron rushed towards him and pulled his shirt to get his attention. Why would you leave, Dad? Aren't parents supposed to live with their children? They both found themselves in an awkward situation hearing Aaron's questions. Dan had already let go of Blair's hand, and so he picked up Aaron to explain. I have some important things to do, Aaron, so I need to go back. Your father is a busy man, Dan explained with a smile. Hearing Dan say this, Aaron got pissed off and started throwing tantrums. No, 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 Dad! This is so unfair. This is the first time I met you. I mean, I met you earlier, but I didn't know you were my dad then. You can't leave now, Aaron replied stubbornly. Aaron hugged Dan tightly and did not intend to let him go. I won't let you leave no matter what, Aaron shrugged. Blair tried to pull them apart. Aaron, let him leave now. He will come back later to see you, Blair insisted. 
Blair tried to pull him away from Dan. Ouch, mommy! Screamed Aaron like he was in a lot of pain. Dan got worried and quickly held him tight and carried him to the couch. Hey, are you okay? Is the wound hurting? What happened? Dan asked. Mommy, didn't you tell Dad that I always scream when I have to pee? Aaron replied, and he started laughing. Dan giggled too, seeing his innocence. I am going to the washroom, and I expect to find you here when I'm back, said Aaron while getting off the couch. Sure, buddy, as you say. Dan agreed to him like he was his boss, and Dan was some obedient employee struggling to make an impression. That's like a good boy, Aaron smiled and then went to pee. As soon as he left, Dan and Blair looked at each other. They both were eager to say something. Suddenly, Dan's phone started ringing and he saw Alyssa's name flashing on the screen. He answered the call and Alyssa started screaming. Where are you, Dan? It has been two days. You neither called nor texted Is everything okay? She probed. Dan realized that he had not texted or called her for the last two days, and not once he had missed her. He panicked and quickly wanted to explain. Well, I was actually occupied. I am so sorry I could not spare a minute to make a call, Dan answered. That is not new. You never have time for me. Where are you at the moment? Anna and I have made your favorite Thai curry. Come home and we'll have dinner, Alyssa insisted. I wish I could, sweetie, but it is absolutely not possible today. But how about you save some for me? Keep some in the refrigerator and I would love to have it tomorrow. Dan gave an excuse. Alyssa did not expect such a firm no. She was shocked. And more than that, disappointed. What is keeping you so busy, Dan? Where exactly are you that you can't even come to eat late at night? Alyssa questioned. Try to understand, Alyssa. I'm in a meeting and I have a couple more scheduled for today. I don't even know when I would get to leave from here, Dan explained. Blair was eavesdropping and couldn't stop laughing hearing Dan lie with such confidence. Everything was happening the way she had imagined, but still a little differently. When Neil reached home from the office, he was very content and satisfied. He was thinking about how the day had started and how it ended. Life could be funny sometimes. Although there was a high possibility of things going completely in a different direction because of Blair's mistake, Neil had handled everything. He was impressed and glad to be able to grab the two important projects. He freshened up and went to the lawn attached to his bungalow. He found his father sitting with a woman. He was unable to see her face. Since he could only see her back, he could not even guess who it was. He quickly went closer to find that it was none other than Amy. Seeing Neil appear suddenly, Amy was startled. Oh my gosh, you scared me, screamed Amy. Neil started laughing and sat on the couch right next to them. (laughs) You are always like that timid rat. I often wonder how your husband will manage with such a coward, Neil replied, mocking Amy. Ben was smiling, seeing them argue like little kids. Well, you guys carry on. I had a long day. I must go and get some rest now, Ben interrupted, getting up from his chair. Well, don't worry about me or my husband, Neil. Start your wedding preparations. Rumor has it that you are getting married to Blair Cooper soon, Amy blurted laughing. Dad told you? I don't believe this, 
What is wrong with the old man? Neil responded, raising his eyebrows. Seeing his weird reaction, Amy began to explain to Neil and started making an effort to convince him to date Blair. I guess this is a golden opportunity for you. You would never be able to get yourself a girl like Blair, Amy suggested. Oh gosh, I do not understand how every woman you come across seems perfect for me. Dad wants me to marry every girl. Blair is my employee. At least keep her out of this. Spare her, please, insisted Neil. He seemed angry and unknowingly sounded utterly impolite. Amy did not see that coming. She was simply pulling his leg. But hearing him talk rudely made her upset. She did not like the way he spoke to her and found it completely uncalled for. She decided to stay quiet and did not say a word further. Neil observed the sudden silence and soon realized that he was a bit rude to Amy. Oh, come on. I am sorry, I didn't mean to be rude, Neil apologized. Amy looked at him with sheer disappointment. Hmm, it's okay. I actually don't care. Neil knew Amy was hurt, and he had to offer her something really nice to get her to forgive him. Okay, fine. Let me take you out somewhere. I will make it up to you. Tell me where you want to party. Neil offered. Wow, sounds amazing. Amy started laughing like a toddler. She was extremely happy when Neil offered to take her out. Sure, I'd love to, but I have a condition, Amy replied. Neil got irritated knowing her condition. He clearly denied, saying, No way, never. I will not do anything like that. I will take you out. That's it. Nobody else. Hey, Blair is not just any random person. If you don't want to take me out, that's okay. Don't give me lame excuses, Amy argued. Neil noticed that he had ruined Amy's mood once again. <sighs> okay, fine. Get whoever you want. Blair, Claire, call the whole town, Neil said in an irritated tone. As soon as she heard Neil, she was ecstatic and was smiling. That's the spirit, big brother. You are the best. Yeah, yeah, fine. I'm flattered. Could you now please get me some coffee at least? Neil asked. Sure, replied Amy, and she left to get them coffee. Neil pulled his phone out of the pocket and started surfing. Amy went to the kitchen and started brewing some coffee. She was finding the whole situation funny, and she couldn't stop thinking about the way she convinced Neil to take Blair along. Deep down, she did want them to date each other. As soon as Amy went to get coffee, Neil started stalking Blair's LinkedIn profile. He started going through the details and was surprised to see the listed achievements. He couldn't believe his eyes. He figured that with her talent and potential, she could help Red Fusion reach greater heights. He suddenly remembered the way he treated her that morning. He was now scared about the consequences of his behavior. What if she decided to quit, he thought. I can't cry over spilled milk. If she talks about quitting, I will stop her. I will convince her anyhow, thought Neil. While he was occupied in his thoughts, Amy came with the coffee. Neil's mother came along with her. They both settled. Seeing his mother with Amy, Neil got a little worried. He was hoping that Amy had not told anything about Blair. He was sure that if she knew, they would all gang up against him and try to convince him to get married to Blair. He was anyway quite frustrated about the whole obsession for his wedding. Everyone in his family wanted him to get married. That was the hot topic. Neil wasn't ready to get married yet. 
He had set many goals, and he wanted to achieve them before tying the knot. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, he got the weirdest thought. Blair is as ambitious as I am. I'm sure we both could together achieve our goals. He had no idea where that thought came from. Wow. Now you too are obsessing over her, he thought to himself. How was your day? And what have you been thinking? Asked Mrs. Archibald, intervening in Neil's thought process. She offered him a bowl of his favorite nut cookies. Great, Mom. The day couldn't have been better. I have been thinking about something at work. Neil replied, taking the cup of coffee from Amy. That is lovely, Mrs. Archibald exclaimed. He started sipping his coffee as quickly as possible, as he wanted to get out of there soon to avoid any further conversations about his wedding. Seeing him sip his hot coffee in a haste, Amy and Mrs. Archibald looked at each other and started laughing. Dan and Alyssa were continuously arguing on the phone, and Alyssa was losing her calm. She was continuously expressing her dissatisfaction. Look, Dan, I don't care where you are, but I need you here for dinner. I don't care if you reach midnight, but trust me, I will not eat unless you come home. Alyssa spoke in a threatening tone. This was enough to make Dan lose his calm and patience. He was irritated. You don't understand anything, do you? I am with a client, screamed Dan. And just then, Aaron came back from the washroom and said something that nobody had expected. I am back now, Dad, and I will talk to you the whole night. We have loads to talk about. Right, Dad? Aaron stated loudly. He was so close to Dan that Alyssa heard him. Every word of his was clearly audible to Alyssa. Alyssa was taken aback. She was shocked. What? Who, who was this, Dan? Who's calling you Dad? Alyssa questioned in shock. Episode 15, A Pinch of Love Dan was totally scared now and sensed he was completely trapped and had no way out. He could sense a tornado of questions from Alyssa. Hearing a kid call her fiancé dad turned Alyssa's world upside down. She got the shock of her life and felt she didn't know Dan at all. The other day, when she tried to get Dan open about his past, he denied even having an affair. And now, it seemed he had a child who was referring to him as Dad. Tell me the truth. Who just called you Dad? And hey, where are you? Alyssa questioned once again. Her voice was shrill, filled with rage, fear, and insecurity. Dan was clueless what to answer and took a deep breath. In the dearth of any explanation, Dan decided to end the conversation. I am not in the position to tell you anything, Alyssa. I will explain once we meet. I will talk to you later. Bye. Dan replied and hung up. Blair was standing at the corner of the room and was enjoying everything. She loved what happened. She quietly got out of the room and left Aaron and Dan to play. She came back to her own room. Blair drew a bath for herself and enjoyed a hot shower. The water kind of washed away all the stress of the day. She then put on a maroon nightsuit and started applying her favorite Japanese cherry blossom lotion. She suddenly wondered that Dan would require fresh clothes to change into, or else he would have to spend the entire night in his formal wear, and that would be extremely uncomfortable. Dan might need a change of clothes. The suit might not be very comfortable, Blair thought. 
She further worried about him spending the night at her flat. She knew all of this was happening way too fast. If he insists on spending the night, I would offer him my room and I will sleep on the couch, thought Blair. Mom, where are you? I'm starving. We are both starving. Please, can we have dinner? Aaron spoke loudly. Hearing him scream, Blair rushed to the living room. She came to find Dan staring at her. He was mesmerized. She looked gorgeous in maroon. Dan first gazed at her brown curls and then looked at her long neck, her firm shoulders, and then her breasts. It reminded him of the passionate kiss they shared five years ago. He could not stop thinking about that night. Blair's beauty was undeniable. Her features made her stand out. She had grace and elegance. She could attract any man with her beauty. Seeing Dan gazing at Blair, Aaron interrupted the silence, rushed to Blair, and hugged her tight, and said with utter innocence, I love my mommy. Do you love her as much as I do, Dad? On hearing this, Dan and Blair got really awkward. To change the topic, Blair asked Dan, I am going to make dinner now. What would you like to have? Before Dan could reply, Aaron insisted, I want to have my favorite, Thai curry. Dad, with just one bite of it, you'll love it. It will become your favorite too. Thai curry. How weird is that? Such a beautiful coincidence. We both love Thai curry and it is our favorite dish, wondered Dan. Although Dan loved the dish, he did not want to bother Blair. Dan was well aware that the whole day had been tiresome and Blair was too exhausted, so he decided to not bother her and tried to convince Aaron. Hey, buddy, let's order in tonight. I am sure your mother is a great cook, but how about we keep the Thai curry for some other day? Dan asked affectionately. I will just take some time to prepare the curry. You don't have to worry, Blair replied. I don't like to argue all the time, Dan stated coldly. Dan quickly took his phone out and placed an order on DoorDash. He wanted to get out of that place as fast as possible. He wanted to talk to Alyssa and fix things. He felt guilty for throwing Alyssa in a situation like that. A part of him also wanted to stay and never leave. For the first time in a long time, he was having so much fun. For some reason, Aaron's innocence was extremely captivating. As soon as they finished eating dinner, Blair offered, You can spend the night at Aaron's room. I will take the couch outside. Before Dan could even respond, Aaron interrupted. Why, Mom? Why would you sleep on the couch? Mom and Dad sleep together, right? Aaron questioned, and he dragged both of them to his room. Blair felt extremely uncomfortable. And on the other hand, Dan felt equally weird about it. As soon as they reached the room, Blair suddenly remembered that she had bought pajamas for her father a few weeks ago and didn't get the chance to give them to him. She had been so occupied lately that she did not even get the chance to visit them. Aaron jumped on the bed and tried to drag Dan too. Blair noticed that Dan was clearly uncomfortable in his clothes. She quickly opened her wardrobe and took the pajamas out and gave them to Dan. Hey, take these. Try them on. Thanks, I appreciate it, but I need to hit the shower, Dan replied, taking the pajamas from her. Dan never skipped a shower before hitting the sack. Although he had decided to spend the night because of Aaron, he was worried about his comfort. Amidst this, when Blair gave him a set of pajamas, Dan breathed a sigh of relief. Blair took out a fresh towel for him and showed him the way to the bathroom. There, take a left. 
Dan wondered, seeing the pajamas, why does she have these pajamas? These are men's. Does she have someone in her life and possibly Aaron's father? He struggled to get rid of this thought. Once Dan was gone, Blair went to the kitchen to get some hot milk for Aaron. Aaron had finished drinking milk, so Blair picked up his glass and went back to the kitchen. Meanwhile, Dan was done with the shower and fully enjoyed the bath. He felt utterly relaxed and calm. All the tiredness seemed to have washed away. On her way back to the kitchen, she bumped into Dan. They both were so absent-minded that they did not see each other. In an unsuccessful attempt to save Blair from falling, Dan lost his balance too, and they both fell on the floor. Being so close to Dan, Blair felt nervous, and her heart started to beat faster. She could feel his breath. She was so conscious of that closeness that she could not even open her eyes. She finally opened her eyes and found Dan on top of her, shirtless and the towel wrapped around him. With hesitation and discomfort, Blair screamed, Why are you just in your towel? Dan had begun to enjoy the closeness when he suddenly realized that Blair might take him wrong. So he quickly explained, Well, I could not put on the pajamas in the bathroom and you lost your balance. They both were still on the floor. Blair was clamping her teeth and gave him a weird look. You should get dressed. You could have worn it before getting out of the bathroom, Blair replied. Well, I kind of predicted that you'll bump into me, so I deliberately came out like this. I sensed that I would try to save you, and in an attempt to do that, I would lose balance, and then we both would be on the floor, and I would get a chance to explain this lying on top of you. I waited for this moment for years, Dan said sarcastically. Hearing this lengthy explanation in such a tone, Blair controlled her laugh as she didn't want Dan to think that they are on good terms now. She did not want to get friendly. She did not want to get close to him, as that could weaken her game. And the game had just begun. While she was occupied with her thoughts, Dan was constantly gazing at her. Desperate to kiss, her soft, delicate, and gentle lips almost seduced him. She looked prettier than ever. No doubt that she was exceptionally pretty. Her long hair made her look like a goddess. And soon in that one moment, he lost control. And before he realized it, he had started kissing her. He kissed her for minutes, and it was filled with passion, something he had never shared with Alyssa. Suddenly, Dan heard footsteps, and he quickly got off her and started to pretend nothing had happened. Dan would not have stopped kissing her had the interruption not happened. He would not have let her go. What happened, Mom? asked Aaron. Nothing, I just slipped. Don't worry about it, Blair replied while fixing her hair. She almost panicked seeing Aaron. She was hoping Aaron had not seen anything. She tried to distract him. The floor's quite slippery, you know, Blair added. And then Aaron noticed Dan wrapped in a towel. <laughs> what is wrong with you, Dad? Do you have no shame? Aaron asked and broke into laughter. This caught Blair's attention, too. She was now staring at Dan and his body. Those six-pack abs were a delight to the eyes. She was struggling to take her eyes off. As soon as she realized that she was getting carried away, she distracted herself. It is too late, Erin. You should get some sleep. I have to go to work, too, so I need you to sleep, too, Blair instructed. She left the room and went to the bedroom to set the bed. As soon as she left the room, Dan quickly got in the pajamas, but didn't know what to wear at the top. Once Blair had set the bed for Aaron, she started to look for something that Dan could wear along with the pajamas. 
She recalled buying a couple of t-shirts for her father a while ago. She picked one of them and went to the room where Dan was. Blair offered him a t-shirt and said, This is all I have, your last option. Dan was more confused and started to wonder whose t-shirt it could be. He was sure there was another guy in Blair's life. He wanted to ask her, but didn't know what to say exactly. He didn't know how she would react. It shouldn't bother me, whether she has one man or more than one man. It shouldn't be of my concern. Blair and I are not a thing. I should not care at all, Dan convinced himself. But Aaron's presence was a huge question now. It was no longer just about her, but also about a little kid. Dan was curious to know everything about him, and he knew he had to make many efforts to solve this mystery and put together all the pieces of the puzzle. But then he somehow kept these thoughts on hold and put on the t-shirt and straight away went to bed. Aaron was on the verge of falling asleep when he suddenly started giggling. Even before sleeping, he pushed Dan and Blair into an awkward situation. Mom, don't you think you are forgetting something? Asked Aaron. Blair could not figure out what Aaron was referring to. Considering the kind of day they had, Dan was also desperate to sleep. Blair started guessing and hoping that it would not be something troublesome. What? I don't understand, Blair questioned. Hearing Aaron's question, Dan sensed something hilarious must be going on, so he chucked the thought of sleeping and tried to encourage Aaron to pop the question. What if mom has forgotten? Reminder, kid, Dan replied with a smile. Blair was wondering what was going on, and she felt Dan was encouraging Aaron to ask such questions. Enough for today, Aaron. Do not be so mischievous. I am counting till 10, and I need you to be asleep, said Blair. This is so harsh. Never curb a child's thoughts. Who shuts a child like that? Asked Dan in a disappointing tone. Blair looked at Dan angrily and then pretended to smile. She dabbed Aaron's head in an attempt to display affection. Okay, fine, little kid. How about you remind the old lady? Asked Blair. Dan sensed something was bothering Blair, and she was trying to dodge. He started to wonder, too, what could be bothering her. He was now curious and was playing along. By now, Blair had sensed that Aaron's question would push her into another dilemma. Therefore, she was trying to distract him to forget the question. But what was Aaron talking about? <laughs> 